do, it is my pleasure to make welcome our teacher, our brother, our friend, the man of God, Alphonse Reed. Receive him in Jesus' name. If you could just open your mic just a, a, a second and just say, bless him, bless him. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Bless him, Bless him, Bless him, Bless him, Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Bless him, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Elder Lambert. I just want to see this seed. Amen. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving and bless thee O Lord oh with my hands lifted up hallelujah and my mouth filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving i will bless thee O lord oh i will bless thee O lord I will bless thee, O Lord, with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. Oh, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless the O Lord with the heart of thanksgiving. Yes, Lord, I will bless the O Lord. That will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless his holy name, and I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, I'll bless his holy name for he has done great things oh he has done great things he has done great things i'll bless his holy name can we just worship the lord where you are hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, you have done great things. You continue to do great things. We magnify you. We bless you, Lord Jesus Christ. We honor you, Lord God Almighty. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God and your truth endure it to all generation. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your people that have gathered themselves together, them that fear thy name. We thank you, Lord, for 
garden pen apostolic oh god and the leadership dear lord god almighty we pray for them that the will of god be done amongst them we pray that god your people lord be strengthened your people lord be edified we pray that your people be restored that they be encouraged in the things of the lord let your will be done tonight lord i commit my mind body soul spirit into your hands hallelujah lord thank you for subduing the enemy even now hallelujah give thy servant clarity of thought clarity of expression precision of speech oh god magnify your grace among your people and let your perfect will be done and we say thank you lord in jesus christ's name praise god and amen praise the name of the lord jesus christ amen thank you elder lambert and I greet you well, sir, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mother Lambert, I greet you well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the saints at Garden Pen Apostolic, amen. The saints at the Norway Church of Jesus Christ, amen, that may be on, amen, as we have, you know, invited always, amen, the brethren to join us here, amen, to hear the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I greet all the visiting friends, Amen. It is not too late to share the link. Amen. Not too late to invite somebody to come and hear the precious word of the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord. They are spirit and they are life. Amen. The Lord wants to prepare his people. Amen. For the times of refreshing that shall come from the presence of the Lord. There are times of refreshing that are scheduled by God for his people, but we have to make Preparation for the, those times and the scripture, amen, admonish us to repent, amen, amen. If you're going to prepare for the times of the refreshing that shall come from the presence of the Lord, the first step, amen, each and every one of us must take is to repent. Sin is a hindrance, amen, amen, to receive our blessing in those times of refreshing. And we certainly don't want to be excluded Amen. We don't want to miss out on the times of refreshing that the Lord certainly has promised from his presence. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm thankful to be able to share the word of the Lord with the brethren and friends again. It is not grievous for me. Amen. To come unto you again with the word of the Lord. Amen. It is, amen, my purpose in this life. Amen. To do God's will. Amen. And all of us certainly want to be obedient tonight. Amen. And so we are going to pick up, amen, and hopefully bring this subject in its format to a conclusion tonight. God's willing, amen, we are looking at infighting one house, two camps, and every one of us who have been on last week, I hope you would have reflected on what you were fed with last week and you should be searching your hearts and mind. Amen. And you should have come to a conclusion which house you were at at the time of hearing the word. And uh, if you were in the wrong camp, or, you, or rather I should have said you should have decided or know which camp you belong to. Amen. And if you found that, you know, based on your assessment that you were in the wrong camp, then I'm sure that you would have been encouraged to make sure that you are aligning with the right camp. Amen. And so we are going to continue in the word of the Lord. Amen. To look at it's really a message about faith and it's also uh, to open up our eyes Amen. As children of God, as to how God view, amen, unbelief, amen. Unbelief is a very serious disease, amen. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And faith in God and his holy word is a great treasure. Any man, any woman, amen, can possess. And so let us, you know, follow in your Bibles, amen, so that you can also be a witness to what is being expressed in your ears. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to start off tonight from the book of um, Matthew chapter 25. Amen. Reading from verse 31 to 34. And it says, when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. 
and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left hand. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, he blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this scripture, this passage of scripture is pointing to a time to come. Amen. Where the Lord would bring the whole world to a conclusion. And uh, he will create separation. He will separate those who he referred to as sheep from those who he referred to as goat. The sheep are those who would have responded to the call of God, to the voice of God in obedience to him. And the goats would have been those unbelieving, rebellious, and disobedient and stubborn folks who rejected the counsel of the Lord. Sorry, and the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so separation will happen. Amen. But even in the midst of uh, this journey in life that we're presently in, uh, there is separation and sifting that is happening Amen. In the midst of God's people from time to time. Amen. The different trials that come, amen, to try us is a part of, amen, sifting and create, creating distinctions and separation, amen, between and differences between those who are truly of God and those who are not. And that's the purpose, amen, of the trying of our faith. It is there to expose and it is there to also reveal, amen, what we're made up, made up of, amen. It will show us if we're standing, amen, in faith or if we are departing from the faith, amen. And so when these trials come upon the world, we want to be reflective. We want to be diligent. Amen. We want to search ourselves. Amen. It's not a time to point fingers, but time to do self-examination. It's always easy for us to point the finger on someone else and blame everyone else except looking at the man in the mirror. And the word of God is as a mirror. It shows us the reflection of our heart, of our soul, of our mind, of every fiber of our being. Amen. And so it is expected as we continue in these last days, more things are going to be revealed unto us. Amen. Among the, 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 the assembly of the saints and more things concerning the state of the world are going to be revealed. Not all things are revealed at the present moment. There are things that are still yet to be made known unto us. That's why we have to be watchful. Watchful meaning, amen, staying in the presence of the Lord, in the word of the Lord, and positioning ourselves that we can hear the voice of God. That's why it is written, him that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. Amen. And when we also read in the book of Matthew chapter 13, picking up from verse 24, it says, and another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. You notice the time that the enemy looks to strike. Amen. It's when, oh, when the people would have gone to sleep. Amen. He wanted to exploit them in their most vulnerable state. That's how the enemy operates. He wants to exploit your vulnerabilities. Amen. And this is why we are charged by the word of the Lord to watch and pray. We cannot afford to fall asleep. Amen. In this hour. Amen. Spiritually. Amen. We have to be awakened. We have to be alert and aware. Amen. To all the devices of the enemy. We have to draw close to God. And uh, unfortunately, 
in spite of the last two plus years, amen, many persons have gone back to, amen, regular programming. They have, amen, uh, gone back to sleep, amen, uh, when the season was sent to also awaken us. And also the season also created some separation. It revealed, amen, where we stood, whether we were in the right camp or the wrong camp, amen. And so while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then appears appeared the tears also so the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir didst thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then hath it tears? Where are these? Where from whence come these tears? Didn't you just plant, sow, just wheat only? Amen. And it says at verse 28, and he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while he gather up the tears, he root up also the wheat with them. This is wisdom. Of course, uh, it's not good to have the tears, you know, hiding in the midst of the wheat, in the midst of the wheat. But if you look to disturb the tears at that tender stage before they are mature, you might end up pulling up wheat with tears or wheat for tears because it is said that uh, tears and wheat look the same, almost identical in their early stages. You know, it's not so easily to distinguish between the two. And so if you just go and root up one of them, you may end up rooting up by uh, arrow. A wheat, a, a, a wheat instead of a tear. And so the scripture said at verse 30, let both, that's speaking to the wheat and the tears, let both grow together until the harvest. There is a harvest coming. And at the harvest, amen, there will be a clear distinction between the tears and the wheat all right and in the time of harvest i will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them you see what's going to happen to the tears burn them but gather the wheat into my barn and even so as we read this parable in the house of God, amongst God's people, in the assembly of the saints, there are two camps, wheat and tears. And, uh, you know, you're not always able at the early stages to identify the tears are the wheat from the tears. And this is why we need the uh, the gift of discerning of spirit, all the giftings of the spirit are essential and necessary in the body of Christ to fulfill, amen, God's will. And so even among us today, there are tears and there are we, two camps, but one house. And, uh, you know, it's not always uh, possible to identify Amen. The tears, except it be the Lord, reveal it unto us. And so a man can be in church for 20 years, 50 years, 60 years, occupying all kind of positions and look the part and act the part. Amen. But in truth, amen, they are not of God. They are wolves in sheep clothing. And unless God send trials and, amen, tribulation in the midst, that's the only time we're able to, amen, see the true character nature, amen, of such a one, amen. And so I'm hearing a feedback, amen. 
And so we have to be very careful and diligent in the house of the Lord. And that's why we're going to have trials until Jesus come. It is, amen, there to help us, those who want to be helped. It is there to help us to grow in the Lord, in the knowledge and the understanding and the revelation of Jesus Christ. And it is there also to expose Amen. That which is not of God to make it known because, of course, God don't want his people to be deceived. Amen. It's not the will of God for his people to be in the dark. We are the children of the day. We are the children of the light and not of darkness. And so when we look at the account of Israel having been delivered by the mighty power of God's hand out of captivity, out of Egypt. And now they went through the wilderness and they were now nigh to the promised land, the land that the Lord gave unto their forefathers and promised them. And there came a time that the Lord instructed Moses to send forth spies into the land that he gave unto Israel, that Israel would now possess that land that was declared to be flowing with milk and honey. Everything that Israel would have had need of was in that land. It was a fruitful land, had grapes so large that it required two men to place the cluster of grapes upon their shoulders to carry it. It had vineyards that they didn't plant, houses that they didn't build, good houses, strong houses, because there were giants in the land and they would have been strong and able to properly work that land. Amen. And so God used the enemies of Israel to prepare that land for Israel to now come and possess that land. And so the instruction to Moses was send men of Israel to go and spy out the land. And so, as we read, they went in, 12 men all together. They spent about 40 days in that land, spying it out. And then there came a report. When they returned, they brought their report as to what they see or what they saw and what they heard. Amen. And there was two different reports provided. Amen. There was some men who the Lord described as bringing forth an evil report. Can you imagine? God has given you a gift. And he said, listen, this is my gift to you. And after you go and examine the gift that God imparted unto you, you end up cursing the gift. You end up speaking against the gift and it is written every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above, from the father of light in whom there is no turning, no shadow, no variableness. And yet God give, gave Israel a good gift and some men, instead of looking at the gift through the eyes of the giver of the gift, they look at the gift through their final mind. And even through the eyes of your own enemies and end up bringing an evil report. And this created a split in the house of Israel. As a result, there were now two camps in one house. Speaking about the house of Israel. But God deliberately is so great. I'm talking about creating separation. God is so wonderful in his wisdom. The Lord deliberately instructed uh, Moses to send men to spy out the land. Remember, this promised land was something that Israel had looked forward to. They had an expectation. The fathers had that expectation that there would come a time that they would go and possess that land. And in fact, the Lord told them to go search out the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. The Lord didn't say, which I will give it up. In God's eyes, it is already done. He told Moses, go send men that they may search 
the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. So it was a done deal in God's eyes. Amen. And so this instruction that the Lord gave Moses was deliberate by God. The Lord knew that there were some unbelievers in his house. And God was not going to allow any unbeliever to inherit his promise. Amen. I want you to get this. The Lord was not going to allow hypocrites to go and inherit his promise to Israel. And so God deliberately told Moses to send men to search out the land. The Lord knew what was in the land. God knew all things. God didn't want to hear any report from them. Amen. They couldn't tell God anything that he didn't know already. He knew there were giants in the land. He knew that the land was fruitful. He was the giver of the gift. But the Lord also knew in the midst of his people, there were some unbelievers. And the promise is not for unbelievers. The promise of God, the promises of God is to those that would dare to believe him, even in the midst of, of adversities. Amen. And so God put a trial. <laughs> this was a trial of the faith of the people of Israel. It was designed to reveal who was on the Lord's side. It was designed to reveal those who truly believe God's promises. And so here comes, here come some men with their report. Describe the land as being one that eateth up its people. Some men reported that there were giants in the land and we were as grasshoppers in their eyes and they saw us the same. And so they were now reporting on the land, not from the vision of the Lord, but from their own final vision, and also from that of their own enemies. They were even speaking in the behalf of their enemies, instead of speaking, amen, that which the Lord has said, I have given this land to you. But then there were two men, amen, Caleb and Joshua, whose report was totally opposite. Amen. To the report that these men who brought their evil report brought. Amen. The men who brought the evil report, they overthrow the faith of everyone in the congregation. Just the words of few unbelievers cause an entire congregant, uh, congregation of people to be unbelieving towards God's word. But there were two witnesses who said, listen, let us go and possess this land now. It is a good land. There were two men that was able to see through the eyes of God. They remembered the victories that God gave them in times past over their enemies. And so when they saw the giants, they saw the giants as just another Goliath that needs to be cast down. And they tried to encourage the people, but the people were so stubborn, amen, so wicked in their heart. And God knew that there were these people amongst his people, amen, he's not ignorant, God is not ignorant, he wasn't surprised, but he wanted to expose it to Moses. He wanted to reveal to leadership what the house was made up of, one house. Israel, but two camps. And so God allowed this situation to come to separate that which is on the Lord's side from that which is not on the Lord's side. And so I want to pick up from Numbers and travel, travel Numbers 14, and I want to, amen, start to travel quickly. And it is written, and the Lord spake unto Moses, reading from verse 26. Of Numbers 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? 
You see how God felt about that virgin? Evil congregation, which murmur against me. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, as truly as I live, said the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carc carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless he shall not come into the land. You shall not inherit the promise concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which he said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which he have despised. Brethren, the promises of God are unto them that would believe. There is a difference between a sinner man who have not tasted of the salvation of the Lord and that man being an unbeliever versus a man or woman who have tasted this heavenly gift, this salvation of the Lord, have seen his hand at work, and then that person still doubt God and is unbelieving. You are a true unbeliever because you should know better. You would have seen the hand of God. Listen, you have sinners who are more believers than men and women who profess to know God in words, but in their works, they deny him. That's a true unbeliever. You have sinners who have not yet been born again, who have faith in God's word. They may not yet obey aspects of the word, but if you should tell them X, Y, and Z, they have the faith to exercise in the Lord. While you would have people who have been born again, blood washed, sanctified, justified, who would then later on turn against the God that they have proven. That is what God despise for the lord is saying what else could i have done that i've not yet done what else could i have shown you that i've not yet shown to you that we, you would see the promised land you see even how fruitful the land is as i told you it would be so there is evidence in the land to confirm what i would have told the fathers then how is it that you ignore the evidence that is set before you and choose to be a murmurer and an unbeliever that's 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 something that the lord is not happy about when it is found among his people so unbelievers wasn't going to be allowed to enter into the promise and so the lord declared what he declared from 20 years upward, you're not going to go into that land. You're going to drop dead in the wilderness. You're going to wander in the wilderness and you will not enter in. Can you imagine? Unbelief amongst those who know better will cause you to linger in a state of wilderness and fruitfulness. You'll go around in circles. And that which you desire, you will not see come to pass. You will, if you're not careful, if you don't turn, if you don't repent, you'll find that years will pass. And you're just going around in circles, not being able to grow spiritually, not being able to go to the next step. Hmm? There are, we are supposed to be moving from faith, growing from faith to faith. The scripture said, building up on our most holy faith. We are supposed to build upon 
our most holy faith. That means faith is not a stagnant uh, position. It's supposed to increase. It's supposed to grow. The more you experience God, the more you're supposed to learn to trust him. Amen. And so the Lord said, but as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in the wilderness and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years. When they should have gone in that promised land the very same day, after the men came back with the report, having spent 40 days searching it out, now instead, their children, the children, had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, each year representing a day that was spent searching out the land. And the scripture said, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of days in which he searched land, even 40 days each day for a year, shall he bear your iniquities. Even 40 years, he shall know my breach of promise. In other words, I'm not going to keep the promise that I made to you because you breach my requirement. You don't have any belief, no faith. And I can't allow an unbelieving people to inherit the promises of God. No, I'm not going to set that precedence. Him that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He said, I, the Lord, have said it. I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. Listen, when you're unbelieving, God sees it as we are being against him. <laughs> when we're not in agreement with the word of God, we're making ourselves enemies of God. And who can fight against the Lord and win? The scripture said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this, in this wilderness. They shall be consumed and there and there they shall die. You don't want to die in the wilderness of unbelief. You don't want to die in the wilderness of sin. Amen. Everything about this salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ is about our faith in him. Amen. In the word of God, in our Lord Jesus Christ, in his name, in his promises. Amen. The scripture said, verse 36, and the men which Moses sent to search land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up slander upon the land. Even those men that bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel. And the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and we will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised. Now, after they have been rebellious, and unbelieving. Moses gave them the instruction of the Lord. Now they want to take it upon themselves. Not at the instruction of the Lord, but now upon themselves. You see, they don't want to submit to God. They want to do what they want to do. And so now they say, listen, we're going to go up and, you know, um, you know, to the place which the Lord had promised. For we have sinned. It sounds like they repent, but did they? No. And Moses said, Wherefore now do we transgress? You're not moving at the word of the Lord. When we do things at our own, at our own will, you're not in the will of God. Amen. God's people must go at the instruction of the Lord. Amen. Not when you feel like, but if God had given an instruction, it's at his word. 
uh, I think there was an account of this prophet, um, Balaam, um, who, uh, when Balak, I hope I don't have the names in reverse, wanted to curse the children of Israel. And God didn't give um, any permission to so do. And the Lord, after that prophet would have sought the Lord um, as to what he should do when the men from Balak came unto him. And uh, the Lord gave him very clear instruction as to um, under what conditions he should go with the men. But he had other thoughts. And when the men came, he decided that he was just going to go with the men, not in accordance to the condition that God had told him. You see, and so when he got on his ass to make that journey, God became an enemy to him. The angel of the Lord stood in the way, in the path of the ass, and the ass couldn't go forward. And then this prophet began to abuse the animal. And so when the, um, the angel of the Lord would have, you know, slew, this prophet and spear the ass because the ass saw what was going on, but the prophet was so caught up with his own will to journey that he couldn't see that. Listen, normally this ass would comply with my instruction, and in spite of me beating the, the ass, it's still not complying. Something had to be wrong. God had to open the mouth of that ass. And the ass spake unto this prophet with a man's voice, amen, and rebuked him. You understand? And so this let us know, it's not just you take up yourself and you just go. No, you go at the instruction of the Lord. And so here, Israel decided that they was just going to go. But the Bible said, Moses said, wherefore now do we transgress? The commandment of the Lord, but it shall not prosper. What you're going to do now? You're not going to prosper in it. Go not up. He even warned them. He said, go not up for the Lord is not among you that he be not smitten before your enemies. And of course they went and they suffer loss. And so this give us a clear picture. While we might be all called by the name of Jesus Christ, why we all may have tasted of this good gift of salvation that the Lord has given unto us. We have to be mindful that we don't forget where the Lord has brought us from. When we are faced with new obstacles, new challenges, that challenge your faith in God, you have to remind yourself of where God has brought you from. The songwriter said, when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, he, it makes me want to go all the way. Every now and then, we have to remind ourselves what the Lord has done, lest we forget and become unbelieving and miss out on the promises of God. No unbeliever was allowed to enter that land that was promised to Israel. God allowed every one of them to fall by the wayside in the wilderness for 40 years. Their children wandered in the wilderness when they could have entered into that promise. That very day when Joshua could have opened his mouth, or Caleb, and said, let's go and possess this land now. We are well able to do it. And when they should have gone in, they were kept out. This is a message for us today. Not all that are called Israel are Israel. Not all that profess to be of Christ are of Christ. Amen. But the Lord have a way of 
exposing that which reflects him versus that which does not represent him. It is the Lord's doing. Amen. The Lord have a way of putting us in the wine press. If I had time, I would have dived into this, but not tonight. God have a way of revealing and exposing that which we are made of. Not the devil. God does it. And so when you read Romans 9, just to give you an understanding, reading from verse 25, it says, as he said also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. This speaks concerning the Gentiles who would believe upon Jesus. They were not God's people. They were not the chosen. But because they would believe upon that seed of Israel, that is Christ Jesus, they were able to partake of the promises that were given unto the Father, which was really for Israel. And, you know, there's coming a time I'm going to teach on this very extensively. And the scripture said at verse 26, And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. This was a prophecy where God was saying, listen, I'm going to raise up a people that was not connected to Israel by DNA, that was not connected to Abraham by DNA, but they are going to be a people that is going to trust in my name. They're going to believe upon me. And because they would have believed upon me, they're going to receive the same promise that was given or that was first designed for Israel. And the scripture said at verse 27, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. I needed to get this. Though the number of Israel be as the sand of the sea, it's just a few, a remnant, just a few shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. All Israel was to enter into that promised land that, that were alive. All of those that were alive that survived the wilderness coming out of Egypt. All of them were to enter the promise. But God, before the crossover into the promised land happened, God put a trial upon Israel so that we today could learn from it for the things that are written aforetime time were written for our learning. So while we talk about Israel, we have to take heed to ourselves. Lest we be overcome by the same spirit of unbelief. And so the Lord allowed this trying to come. And this way he was able to allow only a remnant to go over to inherit the promises. So though they be as the sand of the sea, coming out of Egypt, only a remnant went in that promised land. The scripture said, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath, had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. It was God that preserved a remnant 
for himself when God judged the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Not one soul that was left there when Lot went out with his daughters. Not one soul was left there. Everything perished. And so what the Lord was saying here, if I didn't preserve a seed for myself, Israel, not one soul could have been preserved. They would have been as that which was done to Sodom and Gomorrah, totally wiped out. So it is the Lord that will present unto himself a glorious church. Amen. Not having spot, nor uncle, nor blemish, or any such thing. When you read Galatians 3, reading from verse 21, it's very clear that although, yes, the promise was made to the fathers, to Israel, but this was a promise of faith. To access this promise required that Israel would believe and believe in God is more than what we say. At the end of the day, it's what we do in that moment when we are tried. It's easy for us to believe God for what he can do for you in a certain situation. Listen to me carefully. It's easy for someone to believe God for what God can do for them in a certain situation. But can you believe God to do what he said you must do? In other words, now God gave you an instruction. He gave you something to do. Do you believe God enough? Do you take him at his word enough? Do you fear him enough? that you will do what he says to do. You can believe God to heal you. You can believe God, you know, to provide for your, um, you know, your, your finances, you know, but can you believe him to do what he say you must do? Like the, the, the man, Naaman, who had the leprosy, he wanted to be healed, and God could have just uh, spoke to the prophets and said, be thou healed. And at the very word of the, uh, coming out of the mouth of the prophets, prophet, Naaman could have been healed. But then God, through the prophet, told Naaman to do something. Uh, you want healing? I need you to do something. I'm going to try your faith differently. Because Naaman did believe that Israel's God would heal him. He would have earned the testimonies about what Israel's God was able to do. So Naaman had faith to believe that God would do something for him. But his faith to do what God wanted him to do was no challenge. And so the prophet said, go dip seven times in the river Jordan. And all of a sudden, there was unbelief. There was, uh, you know, wavering, not wanting to do what God says to do. So faith has two dimensions. Faith in God for him to do what he says he will do. God is faithful. But then we need to have faith in God's word, in, in his counsel, to do what he says we must do. That's where a lot of people get challenged. Every one of us. That's where we're truly tested many a times. And many a times we fail that test. And so the scripture said, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, 
that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So the Lord orchestrated that, listen, yes, I made a promise to Israel. They received the law, but they didn't keep it as they should. It, it didn't produce uh, the life that they needed. Uh, it didn't produce the righteousness that they needed. And so God shifted access to the promise, made it accessible, not just because you are of the tribe of Judah, not just because you're from the tribe of Benjamin, not because you're from the tribe of Dan, not just because you're from the tribe of God. No, if you are going to access this promise, you got to access it by faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it says, might be given to them that, Believe, let me read it again. But the scripture had concluded all under sin. The scripture said all of sin. Jews sin, Gentile sin, Greek sin. All were concluded under sin. Those who had the law and those who never had the law. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. That faith is Jesus, the Christ. So the law was there to guide us for a season. It was given to Israel to guide them until that seed came. The scriptures said, wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The law was pointing us to Christ that we may be, might be justified by faith. We were not going to be justified by the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ to them that believe. But verse 25 said, but after that faith is come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. You hear that? Now that faith, which is Jesus Christ, has come, we are no longer under the law. Verse 27 of Galatians 3 said, For as many of us as have been baptized into Jesus Christ have put on Christ. See why baptism into Jesus Christ is important. Important baptism, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is important. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's the infilling of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance, it is very important. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew, you see, Christ pulled down the divisions between biological DNA and spiritual DNA. This promise is not based just upon your biology, a biological DNA or, you know, alignment. But now, this that the Lord is doing is based upon our faith in Christ Jesus. So the scripture said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For he are all one in Christ Jesus. This simply means to access the promise that was made to the fathers it's not it's not based on your jewishness but now this is based on your faith in christ jesus whether whether you be a male 
are a female, whether you be a Greek or a Jew. And he said at verse 29, and if he be Christ, if you belong to Jesus, then are he Abraham's seed and hears according to the promise. This is why we must preach Jesus. Amen. People need to know, no man come to the Father, but by Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the one whom the Father had said, sent. Jesus said, I am the door. Amen. Listen, if you want to get in my house, you got to come through the door. Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. But if you're going to get in his father's house, you got to come through the door. And that door is Jesus Christ. The one that the scripture said, and whatsoever he do in words or deeds, that's Colossians 3.17, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Everything in the scriptures was pointing us to Jesus. The law and the prophets were pointing us to Jesus Christ. And so if you want to inherit the promises of God, it's going to require faith in Jesus Christ. In everything, faith in believing him to do what he say will, he will do for you and faith in you doing what he says you are to do. Amen. I want you to understand, I'm going to use some strong language in the scripture now. Amen. Don't be alarmed. I'm not cursing. <clears throat> I want us to look at this. I've covered this before. But it's good to repeat some things. <clears throat> as the Apostle Paul said, as I said before, so say I again. Amen. Mark chapter 7, reading from 24 to 30. We're going to look at, amen, who is a dog? When the scripture speak about dog, a dog or dogs, what does it mean? <clears throat> Is it that the Lord is trying to, you know, curse a people? No. It is to teach us something. Here is in book of Mark, the scripture says, and from Mark 7, reading from verse 24, and we're going to look at the same account from the book of Matthew from 21, Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28. Sorry. And it says from Mark 7, verse 24, and from thence, he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Seraphician by nation. And remember we read uh, in the previous scripture where it told us that we're all one in Christ Jesus, neither Jew nor Greek, all right? We read whereby the promises are accessed by faith. Here is a Greek woman, Seraphician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. This woman knew her daughter had a devil, and she wanted this devil gone. And so the scripture said, but Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. I'm here to take care of the children first. Let the children eat the bread first and be filled. For it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dog. Now the Jews are Israel. They were the children and the bread, the promises of God were to them first. Amen. The gospel was first preached to the Jews and then to the Greeks. The promises were to the Jews first. It was made to the fathers. 
And so Jesus came to reach the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But here is a Greek woman, a Seraphician woman, want to get the children's bread. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, no, the children has to be fed first and be filled. And the scripture said, and in fact, Jesus said, ah, Jesus, let me use Jesus' language. For it is not meat, it's not right to take the children's bread and to pass it unto the dogs. All the other nations were seen as dogs and sorcerers. Those nations that were not attached to the promise, which were all other nations apart from the, the Jews, the Israelites. They were seen as dogs and sorcerers. And I'm going to explain that. And verse 29, and, he's, and, and, and verse 28, and she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat up the children's crumbs. So she said, listen, I'm willing to settle for what fall on the ground, that which the children wouldn't eat. Because it's crumbs. It, it, you know, it fell off. The children are not looking for crumbs. Children get bread. But the dogs are happy, even just for the crumbs. Dogs don't have great expectation of their master. They just want a little crumb. They just want something that fall off the table. And they're happy. <laughs> and he said unto her, when she made that statement, for this saying, because of what you say, because of your humility, because of your faith, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. Listen, Jesus never go where the daughter was. Jesus said, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And if Jesus spoke those words, once those words left Jesus' mouth, once Jesus said, the devil is gone. You see, by the time he said, daughter, you better believe that devil is gone out of that woman's daughter. Amen. The Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And verse 30 said, and when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. This woman was a Greek, and her nation could have fallen under the category of dogs and sorcerers, for they were unbelievers. But this woman had faith, and because she had faith and humility, Jesus didn't give her crumbs. Amen. God gave her the children's bread, that which was reserved for the children. She was able to access it. Why? She believed. She was humble. She had the right spirit. She had every reason to have been discouraged and left being disappointed. She could have responded to Jesus cursing him. Because he said it's not meat to take the children's bread and pass it to dogs. The woman could have said, who are you calling dog? You're out of your place. But no, she responded in humility. God rejected or resisted the proud, but he gave grace to the humble. Here the woman access grace that was reserved for children. She proved that she wasn't a dog. She proved that she was a daughter of Abraham by faith. This was God opening up the eyes of the people so they would know that which is important in the eyes of God. Faith in his word. And this woman proved that indeed she had what it takes to access the promise. When you read the same account, I just want to read it because it reported a little bit different. Picking up from verse 22, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. 
But he answered her, not a word. This account said Jesus answered her, not a word. Can you, you're in, can you imagine you being in need and you're being ignored? No answer. Hmm. How many of us would keep on praying? You pray one time on the same matter, nothing changed. Two times, no answer. Three times, no answer. How determined are you to get what you want from God, what you need from the Lord? How determined are you? Jesus says, see, and he shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask. And it shall be given. Sometimes you have to apply all three methods. Ask, knock, seek. Verse 23. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him saying, send her away for she cried after us. She's no Jew. She's not a part of Israel. She's not of Abraham's seed. Dismiss her. The scripture said, but he answered and said, Jesus answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is what I wanted to understand. It was Israel time and season. At that time, the focus was on Israel reaching the lost sheep of Israel. But here is this woman able to access something before the time. <laughs> Faith will allow you to access gifts from God even before the designated season. Your determination and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, faith in him to do what he said he would do and faith in him to do what he said you should do can allow you to access promises before even it's time. That's how powerful faith in God is. It's a very potent uh, tool, gift to have. That's why Jesus said, if ye shall have faith as a, a grain of mustard seed, you can speak to your mountain and your mountain got to move. Then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me, persistency. But he answered and said, it is not meat. So it was at this point, Jesus said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, truth, Lord. She came in agreement with the Lord. I'm, I'm not deserving. I'm not worthy. Truth, Lord. Hmm? Yet the dogs eat up the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, this is what I want you to get to. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. It's a faith thing. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now, this is written. This woman was Greek, Seraphician. Here is why she had access. First John, John 1, verse 11 to 13. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. His own was Israel, and they received him not. But as many receive him, this now have nothing to do whether you are Greek or Jew, circumcised or not as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name this is what gave this woman access she believed jesus said woman oh woman great is thy faith how great is your faith today Bridget? amen this woman didn't have the Holy Ghost. She was not yet baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but she had great faith. So what about us who have received the promise, the gift of the Holy Ghost, have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and have seen the work of God? How about us having faith? Philippians 3, 1 to 4, we have uh, admonishing from the apostle by the Holy Ghost. He said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. 
to write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous. That's what I'm saying. I know I repeat some things, amen, that I've preached before, that I've thought before. But for me, it's not grievous because we have to be reminded. But for you, it is safe. It's for your safety that you may learn, that you may apply the word of God, that you may take heed, that you may consider what the Lord is saying. Him that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Then the apostle said, beware of dogs. You think the apostle was talking about being aware, aware of a pit bull, of a German shepherd? <laughs> Uh, you think the, the apostle was saying, beware of bulldogs? No. Beware of unbelievers. People who have experienced and tasted of the salvation of the Lord, have seen his handiwork and power, but yet are unbelieving. Beware of dogs. Notice he said, beware of evil workers when one who have tasted of the lord's giftings become unbelieving you become an evil worker beware of the concision for we are the circumcision which worship god in the spirit not in the flesh in the spirit it's not about your circumcision in your flesh that don't count anymore. Is your heart circumcised? Is your heart circumcised? I know you're a Jew and your foreskin has been severed, but is your heart circumcised? And he said, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Our confidence is in the living God. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I the more. When I read Isaiah 56, the language of the scripture again, warn us, tell us that among God's people, you'll find dogs and you have to beware of them. It's not about, you know, using strong language, but for us to understand how God sees unbelief. The scripture said at verse 8 of Isaiah 56, The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel said, Yet will I gather others to him. So you see, the provision was made. The prophet spoke about this provision that the Lord had made. Yes, he gathered the outcasts of Israel, those that were scattered, the remnant, but yet will I gather others, that those others are the Gentiles, those who didn't have access to the promise. God promised that he will gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. You notice they're going to be beside the remnant of Israel. Oh Lord, help me. There's so much that can be taught on this. God is going to gather others to him that were not of Israel according to DNA, that were not of Abraham according to DNA, but by faith. And he's going to gather those other people beside those that are gathered unto him, which is Israel. All ye beasts of the field come to the fall. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest. Verse 10 said, his watchmen are blind. God said, there are some blind watchmen. They're not discerning. They're not discerning the times. The wolves have come in sheep clothing God, among God's people, but they're not seeing. The enemy is trying to sow unbelief in the hearts of God's people, but the watchmen are blind. Hmm. The scripture said they are all ignorant. They have not the knowledge of God. They are all dumb dogs. This is not me. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord said they are all dumb dogs. Can you imagine? You live in a volatile community. And you invested in a nice German shepherd. You gave him, you know, you got that German shepherd, shepherd professional training 
feed that dog with the best food. You pamper that dog. You take it for walks in the park. And here it is one day you're home in the midnight hour and some thieves invade your premises. And this dog see the thieves and he's there to sit dumb, wouldn't bark, wouldn't make a sound to alert his master. He would make a sound to say, danger, danger. And in fact, the thief pull out a piece of chicken and just throw it to him. And that dog, like a greedy dog, just eat up the chicken and just lay back down and gone to sleep while the thieves break it in your house. How would you feel? Would you keep that dumb dog around your house? Would you have any confidence or trust? in that dog no you won't you'd put him up for sale <laughs> perhaps <laughs> the scripture said they are all ignorant they are all dumb dogs unbelievers mm -hmm. they cannot bark can you imagine sleeping lazy laying down look to slumber yeah, they are greedy dogs. They are quick to collect offerings, love to raise offerings. They spend more time talking about keeping offerings than pointing out the devices of the enemy to the people of God that the people of God may be aware and alert to the devices of the enemy. The scripture said we are to know the devices of the enemy. But if the watchman is blind, if the watchman is a dumb dog, the wolves will prosper in the midst of the people. Greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. They are not about the agenda of God. They will push every agenda except the agenda of the Lord. Dangerous. Everyone for his king from his quarter just want to secure my legacy. Huh? What about God's agenda? It's all about your legacy. What about God's will? And so it's dangerous to be led by a blind watchman. It is dangerous to be in the company of a dumb dog. And I'm speaking spiritually now. The scripture said at verse 12, come ye, say thee, I will fetch wine, the carnal minded, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundantly. They want to store up a lot of money in the bank. It's all about what they can acquire in this world. And the focus is not on the heartbeat of God, which is the souls of men to save them from the judgment and wrath of God that is to come. Dumb dogs, people who know the truth, but are willingly ignorant. Philippians 3 verse 7 said, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. You see the, you see the difference between the apostles and the blind watchmen that was in Israel. They were all greedy dogs, all about Cain for themselves. Loving to slumber, lying down, loving to sleep. All about eating and drinking, greedy. But look at the apostles. Look at the spirit that work in the apostles. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. It's a different attitude. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. The apostles were not caught up with the things of the world. They were not preaching for money. They didn't bother the people every minute for offerings just so that they could do things that are not even profiting the body of Christ, which is the blood-washed people. 
and not the building. When you see these men raising offerings, they were raising offerings to take care of the needs of the poor saints. These men love the people of God and they would raise an offering to take care of the needs of the poor saints. How much are we seeing that happening today? These men count what they had lost that they may win Christ. They suffered loss of all things and they count them as nothing. They count them but dumb that they may win Christ. Examine the watchmen today. Do you see this attitude in them? Amen. Have you ever seen a service kept when there is not, you know, a plea consistently for offerings? Listen, Bridget, I'm not against offering. Don't get me wrong. If you know God and you love God and you love the things of God, nobody should have to beat you over the head to contribute to the work of God. Freely, willingly, God don't want to force offering. God don't want us to blackmail you to contribute to the work of God. God don't want that. After all that God has done for you, you bless you with a job, put a roof over your head, and then the, 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 the pastor have to come and beat you over the head to support the work. No, God don't want that stuff. We have to teach the people to love God, exercise their faith in God. Amen. The scripture said at verse 9, this is the apostle Paul, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, not about self-righteousness, which is of the law. Paul, he was a Pharisee. He was of the sect of the Pharisee. So concerning the law, strict. But that which is through faith, I'm preaching a faith message, through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, by faith. The righteousness that comes from God is imputed unto us by our belief in him. It is Christ's righteousness that we partake of by faith. Revelation, I'm closing. Revelation chapter 22, the scripture said at verse 14, blessed are they that do his commandments, talking about doing that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The scripture said, for without, so outside of the city, without are dogs and sorcerers. This is the language of the scripture. And warmongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love it and make it a lie. If we are unbelieving, we are pushing ourselves outside of, outside of that blessed city. Verse 21, sorry, chapter 21 of Revelation, verse 7. Amen. So you know who the dogs are. Amen. The scripture said at verse 7 of Revelation 21, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will believe, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, which camp are you in? But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the warmongers and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Fearful is not of God. Unbelieving, not of God. Verse, chapter 17 of Revelation, verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. So they're going to make war with the Lamb, but victory is certain. For he is Lord of Lords, and King of Kings, and they that are with him, notice who are with the Lord, they that are with the Lamb are called and chosen and faithful. Virgin, we got to be faithful. 
We gotta be faithful. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. I'm landing. Deuteronomy 32, reading from verse 15. Here is the danger that lurks around God's people. When we become fat, when we become rich, when we feel like we have everything, there is a tendency for us to fall asleep. There is a tendency for us to lose faith and not trust God. Deuteronomy 32, reading from verse 15. But Jes Jeshron waxed fat, he grew fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, you're prospering. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God. Notice when he forsook God. When he have everything. This is why we need trouble. This is why God sent us trials. Because some of us would not be saved. If we get everything we want when we want it. Then he forsook God which made him. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. We are not to lightly esteem our God. We must put God's word upon the pinnacle that it ought to be in our life. God has exalted his word above all his name, and his word is forever settled in heaven. Verse 16 they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. You see, they lightly esteem him, esteem him. So they went after strange gods with abominations, provoked them, him, to anger. They sacrificed to devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up. You know, there are some new gods in the Virgin. We have to be mindful of social media. Let it, be, let it become one of the new gods in our life. Be careful. They have good use, but we have to be careful not to allow some new gods to pop up in our life. The scripture said, new gods that came up newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Verse 19. And when the Lord saw it, so God was paying attention, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. This was God's children provoking him. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a forward generation. Pay attention. Children in whom is no faith. Brethren, let that not be us. Can you imagine? You have seen the work of God and you end up having no faith when you're tried. And the Lord said, as a result, verse 21, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They put their trust in something else. And now you make me jealous, said the Lord. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those things which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell. And shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Revelation. 3, 14 said, and unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, and write these things, said the amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. God is paying attention to our works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich. This sounds familiar. Waxing fat. God thick. Thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods. Nothing is wrong with increasing with goods. But can you maintain your relationship with God with increase? 
and I have need of nothing. When they have increased in goods, they put God aside. Now they have everything they want. God is put on the back burner. No more praying, no more fasting. Rise up to eat, sit down to play. And know it's not that thou art wretched. This is how God sees such a one. Thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now God gave some counsel. I counsel thee to buy me, buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The word of God requires us to respond. And this is the response that God wants, response to the Lord wants. Let us repent. Behold, said the Lord, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. The fact that the Lord is on the outside knocking on the door of his own house, that's quite telling. It means this is a people that have departed from the faith. Why God is on the outside knocking? When our body is the temple of the living God, he should be on the inside. Why is he on, on the outside? We have become unbelieving. We have pushed him out with our unbelief. A, a children in whom there is no faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The just shall live by faith. The scripture said, To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. And I'm closing. Hebrews 3, verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost hath said, today, listen, brethren, if he will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. As in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. We have read about that in Numbers 13, Numbers 14. Now the apostle is calling our attention to what happened in the Old Testament with Israel. And he's speaking to the church by the Holy Ghost. Pay attention to what the Holy Ghost said. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, this was the problem, and saw my works 40 years. For 40 years they proved God, saw his works. He fed them with manna from heaven, fed them with quail, water come from the rock, delivered them from their enemies. The scripture said, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. To the church, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And I close with this scripture, Luke 18. There is a search out for faith. 
I tell you, at verse 8 of Luke 18, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. There is a search for faith in the earth, even in this very hour. Be he steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God bless you. One house, two camps. There is an infighting. Which camp do you belong to? Thank you for listening to the word of the Lord. The grace and the mercy and the peace of God be upon all his people. Amen. Over to you, Elder Lambert. Amen and amen. Indeed, tonight we can truly say the man of God has truly delivered the word and we are grateful. Bless the name of the Lord. Before I say thank you and close off, um, peradventure there are persons who have a, a question to ask. Like last week, there was someone who wanted to, you know, get a little clarification about the, un, um, the unequal yoke. And so you did not get a chance. If you're online and you wish to ask that question, um, I'll give you the chance to do so if you're online. Want to get a little more clarity on the unequal yoke. If not, please be reminded that I ask that if you have a question and you can send me that question that you want to ask our teacher, I can get it to him and you will surely get your answer. Thank you very much. But I want to say a big thank you again to our teacher, the man of God, our brother, our friend, Elder Alfonso Reed indeed. He had really been a blessing to us. God had provided him at a time when we needed, you know, the help. Yes, and we can truly say we are thankful for him. I want to thank everyone that came on tonight to listen to the conclusion of this topic. Praise the name of the Lord. I can truly say that you have gain so much from this in fighting one house, two camp, part two tonight. We are truly blessed. Bless the name of the Lord. Yes, um, thanks to those persons who have been putting in some things in the chat. I want to commend um, our scribe tonight, Be Small. Yes, be small. I see where you were backing up the teacher with some scriptures. I really thank you and I appreciate that. I hope that, you know, similar to how I do it, I'm not saying everybody going to do it like me, but, you know, I have my book here that I write down. We know we can go back on the, the link and um, not on the, the, um, the Zoom, but on the Facebook. And we can hear this again. And of course, I've seen where it's also go on the YouTube. So you can um, get it again. But when you write down, when you write down, yes, because if I am to take up a little time, I could, you know, just actually repeat the things that was, was said tonight. Yes. But I will not go into do that. But I, I I wrote them down and I'm really blessed. So again, persons who have been typing in, I really appreciate what you have been typing. And we look forward for next week. Because you know what happened? God had blessed this man, man of God, with such, you know, uh, the ability to really impart the word and he imparts it in such a way. And so we can assure that come next week, he's coming with another topic, which 
will be enlightened. So again, he's saying, bless you, bless you. We thank God. Amen. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we give you thanks for tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for our teacher, our brother, our friend, Alfonso Reed, God, who you have placed, oh God, in our life, in that, Lord God, from that connection was made. Lord, you have enabled him to be sharing with us. And so, Father God, I'm asking you right now to continue to shower down your blessings upon him. Bless his household. Bless his business, Lord. And Lord, as he continues to share, we know, Lord God, it is not just for us, but this is going wide. And so, Father God, we just want to let you know how much we appreciate you, Lord, for using him in your service. And we thank each and every one, Lord God, those that are on the Zoom platform, those that are on the Facebook and that have been tuning in. We thank you, Lord, and even by extension, the YouTube channel. And so, Lord, as they continue to feast upon your word, then, Lord God, they will grow from strength to strength as they be edified. Bless now, Lord, I pray, and let your sweet, precious divine will be done. This mercy we ask and beg in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So if by chance someone had put a question, let me just um, take a, a quick look to see if there be any question. Yes, well, somebody said, thank you, Minister Reed, for sharing um, your email, rich word of God, yes, yeah, sharing the rich word. God bless you, Minister Reed, the teaching are what we needed these today. Yes, yes, thank you. God bless you, and peace of the Lord be upon you. So again, I thank those of you who came on from the start to the finish. Some came and whatever reason they left, while there are those that still on and some came on late, but just want to remind you that we begin at 7.30 p.m. Yes, that's when we begin. God bless you. God bless you. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all. Most important forever. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. You. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you all, everybody. All right, we are closing off now. God bless you again. Bless you all. Bless you all.